Hi there, this is Andrew White from Northumberland Heath Baptist Church and this is our sermon for the Sunday after Easter. At some point in the future, Steve Gordon and I would love to see you all in church but for now we're still finding ways to stop, to reflect, to study and to worship wherever we are. Our sermon for today I've entitled Plodding On But Seemingly Being Stuck and we're going to look at the disciples on the road to Emmaus. So our reading comes from Luke chapter 24 starting at verse 13. Now on the same day, Easter Sunday, Two of them, the disciples, were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you were walking along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, But they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessarily that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses And all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us? on the road while he was opening the scriptures to us that same hour they got up and returned to jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together they were saying the lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to simon then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made to known to them in the breaking of the bread. It 
during this crisis, lots of people talk about wanting to go back to normal. But going back to normal shouldn't be wanting to go backwards. Things will be different. Life will be different. Church will be different. Back to normal, but not going backwards. When we look at this story, we see two of the disciples heading home, trudging along the road, their hopes, their dreams, their faith, all seemed somewhat lost. What now? What for the future? You see, Good Friday had given them a lie. Perhaps that Jesus wasn't the saviour of the world. Some commentators have said that perhaps the disciples thought that at the cross something miraculous would happen and they would see Israel redeemed from heaven. And yet Good Friday seems to have laid a lie in their hearts. And yet Jesus now becomes present in their everyday lives. And in that he brings a new understanding. He brings new life to them. He brings new potential for moving forward. And so, tired though they are, exhausted by the last three days, yet they rush back the seven miles to Jerusalem. Not because they want to go backwards, not because they want to retreat or be safe, but because they want to tell others not to stay stuck at the lies of Good Friday. The promise of eternal life in Jesus is not just an end of life insurance policy for you and for me. It is the reality of Jesus alive with you every day, day by day and minute by minute. Perhaps those disciples had been expecting something and yet now Jesus was actually with them. And just as we shouldn't be waiting for an end of life insurance also that moment when we first knew Jesus as saviour that should not be a place that we go back to we get stuck at with a lovely story that's only rooted in the past we need to share the truth that Jesus has risen from the dead and we need to share that with others and what if we know the Easter story we know our scriptures fairly well and yet like these two disciples had never really got to grips and understood it if you don't know Jesus as your saviour this current crisis might seem like the darkness of the crucifixion on Good Friday we can't understand it, it seems frightening, and we can't move on from it. But we at North Heath Baptist Church want you to know, the cross is empty, your sins are forgiven. The tomb is empty, and so the fear of death is no more. Jesus, the risen Saviour, wants to be with you day by day and minute by minute. To walk with you on the journey ahead, wherever it takes you. And to change your life forever. In closing, let me share a prayer that is well known to lots of people. The Lord's Prayer. The prayer that he left with his disciples for them to use and for us to use too. And then I'll close very much in a responsive prayer for us all. 
so we say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so a responsive prayer for us all. Loving Saviour, we don't want to stay stuck at the point of the cross. Loving Saviour, we don't want to live lives fearful and full of indecision. Loving Saviour, we want to go forward, to step out, to know the truth of you in our lives. So Jesus Christ, Saviour, Redeemer, break into our lives afresh that we might live as people with Jesus walking with us day by day. Amen. And in all that you do in the next few days, stay safe and God bless.